glad that you're able to do that. And uh, kudos to the work that they continue to do there. After that work, he moved on to become the chief health equity and ADA officer at Indiana Family and Social Services Administration. Tell us about that position. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier that I've always wanted to work in government. And so this was just a wonderful opportunity to do that. Uh, the secretary of that administration at the time reached out and was really um, interested in making sure that this is a position they've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, FSSA, as it's abbreviated, has historically been kind of the health and human services primary agency. So Medicaid and related services, it's separate from the public health department, but the secretary at the time came from the public health department and was all about social determinants of health and really wanted to make sure that we had an office that focused on those issues. So they developed one, but needed someone to lead it. And so the timing was really fortuitous with um, everything that was happening with COVID and the work that they were doing around COVID disparities and data and access to services. And so they created this position um, that was new uh, to not just address health equity writ large, but really thinking about the intersections of equity and public policy. The ADA portion obviously focuses on people with disabilities, which is a huge component of the people who receive the social services that are offered uh, by state and federal policy. And so also uplifting the idea that um, not only do people with disabilities matter, but the state is putting forth um, such a title that we ensure that they're incorporated in the work that we do pretty explicitly. So um, it felt, it's one of those decisions where it's very easy to make, but it's also very difficult. I loved working at CRISP, which is the acronym for the center. Um, love my team and hate it to leave, but knew that this was a really great and unique opportunity. And I did not want to pass that up, especially when um, we work with them as an organization is kind of like a here's thinking about research and partnership opportunities so to be on the other side and really get a better sense of how things work in practice. I couldn't really um, turn on that opportunity. Yeah, that, that makes sense when, because you never know when right opportunities are going to fall um, in front of you. So I'm, I'm glad that you're able to lead some of that work and get some of the experience in, in the government as well. And after this, you, you progress to become an adjunct professor and community scholar at Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Tell us about this. Well, I was actually um, a clinical uh, professor while I was working at Indiana University. So I already had kind of a faculty classification, which is hilarious given that I have said throughout my life, I don't want to be. <laughs> but I did have <laughs> classification. And so I started teaching classes and things while I was there. Um, and so when I left the university system, it was kind of a question of, can you still stay involved? And do I want to stay involved? And um, importantly, that that community scholar piece is really important because it acknowledged the fact that, you know, I'm not just teaching classes, but really, um, being appreciated for thinking about um, community and things that are, are more applied. And so um, I held that role both at the School of Environmental and Public and Environmental Affairs, but also in the Africana Studies program. So getting to design really cool classes around, um, you know, race and Black folks and public policy and uh, reaching students who are interested in that and not really seeing how that aligned um, with their community. And so those types of opportunities are really great to still have the connection and get a sense of, you know, what the latest things are happening um, research-wise and otherwise in those places. That's awesome. And you, you speak a lot about, like, making the work that you're doing or taking the work you're doing, making it, like, actionable, making it, like, community-oriented. For people that are out there that are maybe like struggling to see how they can take their work and make it like more community oriented, community focused, community, I don't know, driven in, in the work, what, what kinds of like tips or advice would you give to them? And, and let's imagine this person also has like a PhD. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think you have to just be super humble. Um, I think, especially when you get these degrees, people make you feel like, you're an expert and you're so smart. And you are. Congratulations. Like that is an accomplishment. Um, but I think I've always felt a pull toward people because I know that's not my gift. I mentioned my mom a lot and she's just so great at engaging people where they are. Um, people who 
have slept in their car overnight and come into her office. And, you know, that's not a skill that I haven't, but I've, I know that I want to make things better for people with those experiences. And so you just have to be willing uh, to do that. I'm comfortable being in those spaces because that's what I've grown up around. But if you've never done that before, um, I think it could be a really 